Welcome, welcome. Also create explore reports or exploration reports. On the main page for explorations, you can use one of the great templates that Google has available. Click on the template gallery. We can take a look at all the reports, templates that Google has available. If you want to see a video covering the basics of exploration reports, including how to configure the settings for a free form report, wait till the end and there will be a link on the screen or in the description. Now let's take a look at the funnel exploration. We have the steps across the top here and for each stage you can see how many users progress to the next stage and how many users abandoned at each stage. In the table here, you can see the various steps along with the breakdown for a device category, which was added in this section down here. Over here, you can choose whether you want a standard funnel or a trended funnel, which gives you a line chart for each stage. And you can see how that trends over time. And click on these tabs at the top to highlight one stage. You can hover over to see which line is which, or you can click on one of those tabs to isolate that line. If you make the funnel open, that means users can enter into the funnel at any step. So you can make it closed where the users must start from step one by leaving this off. Over here, continuing in the tab settings, you can configure the steps, remove any steps if you want, or edit the steps which you can configure in this area and the preview summary will update to the right and when you're ready just click apply you can toggle on to show the elapsed time for the funnel and you can see the amount of time that it takes to complete each step what's nice about these explorer reports is they have these undo and redo buttons and it's especially useful with the next type of explore report that we'll look at. So similar to the funnel exploration report, there's the path exploration report where the funnel exploration focuses on one specific clickstream path. The path exploration gives you multiple clickstream. So from the session start, they can go through page view event or some other events and from the page view they'll go to one of these other events. You can create a reverse path exploration where it starts with a destination by clicking on start over in the top here and choosing endpoint. So we can choose an event name such as purchase for our endpoint and then we can view a path exploration and reverse engineer the journey. If you click on another event within step one you can see where the user or what events the user take after that action. If you want to retract the step what you have to do is click on the node that you previously clicked on. So for example, we clicked on page view in order to add step three. And if we wanted to remove step three, then we would simply click page view again. Now let's take a look at a segment overlap exploration. This will show us various audience segments and how they overlap with one another. So you can see the audience segments here and the legend. With these various audience segments, you can see the total number of active users in this table below, along with the various segments that overlap. You can also look at various values, for example, event count or transactions. Let's add in transactions and this will add another column to the table so you can see what audience segments are producing the most transactions. Now let's go on to the cohort exploration. 
So for this cohort exploration, again, you'll see the cohorts according to the date in which they entered your site or visited your web property. And in this table, you have the left column with the date range. It's similar to the cohort table that you see in your report snapshot with the week number at the top and the number of users for each week. So for this week here, you can see the number of users that visited and then how many of those returned to the site in subsequent weeks. For the cohort inclusion, you can change this first touch to specific events. So for example, if you want to add one for add to cart event, you can see the number of users that took the action of adding an item to a cart. And then for the return criteria, you can also specify what event you want to use. If it's another event or another add to cart event. Now we'll go on to the user lifetime template. In this table, we have the first user medium, the traffic source that they came from, the total number of users, lifetime average, which is the sum of the revenue from all the sources for all time, lifetime engagement duration average, and lifetime transactions average. You can change the row dimensions to any of these suggested dimensions as well. GA4 also provides some great templates for different use cases and industries. They're all based on the techniques that we just reviewed, and they include traffic acquisition, conversions, and prediction for top spenders. So make sure you check those out. A point out for the e-commerce template, you'll need to replace the two dimensions they have by default, that is the source and medium dimensions, which are deprecated, because you'll see this error message for no data. Instead, remove these dimensions and then click on the plus sign in the dimension section here and add session source, session dimension, or any of the dimensions that are actually available. Make sure you click on import in the top right and then drag those dimensions over to your rows and your data will populate the table. If you want a tutorial that covers events, conversions, and all the reports in GA4, check the link on the screen or in the description. So if you found this useful, please like, comment, subscribe. And if you want more content on digital analytics, including tracking, reporting, analysis. We'll see you in the next episode.